The price to book ratio or PB ratio is a popular metric used by investors in order to assess a company's financial health and potential for growth. In this video, I'm going to share with you what the PB ratio formula is, how it is calculated, and most importantly, how you can use this number to make informed investment decisions. And if you stay until the end of this video, I'm going to share some practical examples as well as some tips for you to be able to use the PB formula more effectively. Okay so right here we have the PV ratio formula this is also known as the price to book value ratio and the formula goes as follows so what you do is you take the market price per share for that particular company and you divide it by the book value per share so don't worry what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk you step by step through the calculation using Apple as an example so the first thing that we're gonna do is to get the company's price per share in order to get this value directly on our spreadsheet, I'm gonna be using white sheets. We have tutorials on our channel that you can check out, but in this case, it's gonna be very simple. So we're gonna use the wise price function, enter the symbol, parameter is gonna be price, and this is gonna return, and this is gonna return the real time price for this particular company. So as you can see, we get the price right here. Now you don't necessarily have to use this method. What you can also do is just to go on Google, type in the name of the company, followed by the word stock. And as you can see, you will get the stock price. In this case, obviously if I refresh it, it's probably going to be different. So you really have the flexibility to use both methods. The next step of the calculation is to get the book value per share. We have an entire video on our channel that we posted recently on how to calculate this, but we're going to briefly go over this. So there's many ways in which you can do it. You can, of course, Google this value. Another thing that you can do is have the direct uh, financial statements of the particular company and you can get it from there. So for example, in this case, I can just enter Apple, select annual data, and what's gonna happen here is that you're gonna get the different financial statements of the company. And so here, what we're really looking at is the balance sheet. And so book value per share, if you remember from that video, it's very simple. So you take the total assets minus the total liabilities, that gives you your stockholders equity. So this is the book value of the company. And then all you have to do is divide it by the number of shares. In order to divide it by the number of shares, what you can do is take this and then divide it by the number of shares, which are which is usually found on the income statement. So in this case, we would use this value. And this would be the book value per share of the company. What you can also do is if you look at this key metrics, and I'm gonna zoom in here, you can see right here that we have here, let me just expand. You can see right here that we have the book value per share of the company. So here you can see that it's exactly the same. Obviously, there's some rounding applied, but here's 3.12. And so going back to our formula, what we could do is book value per share. And we could, of course, just copy paste the 3.12 that we saw before. Or in order to keep it dynamic, we can use the WISE formula, which you can see how it works right here. So we're gonna use the WISE formula. This is gonna be the ticker, the parameters, book value per share, and then the period uh, we are gonna do LY. So this is the latest fiscal year of data available. And then as you can see, we get the exact same value. We're gonna round it. And now in order to get the price to book value ratio or the PV ratio, what we're gonna do is very simple. We're gonna take the market price per share and we're gonna divide it by the book value per share. So in this case, the PV ratio is 46.66. This indicates that in this particular case, if you buy Apple stock right now at the current stock price, and the book value per share, you would be buying at 46.66 times the book value per share. So you'd be paying this value times 46.6 times, and that essentially gives you 145. So you're paying quite a high multiple for Apple stock. However, 
this is not the only ratio that you can look at for analyzing stocks. There's many other ratios and you can check some of those in our channel. What I want to show you next is how you can get the PB ratio automatically for a whole bunch of companies at once. And lastly, also the fact that once you set up a model like this using the formulas, what you can do is just simply change the company ticker and you're going to get the data and the answer that you're looking for right away. Once you know the PB ratio formula or the price to book ratio formula, the question that comes up is how do you know what's a good PB ratio for a particular company? So one of the best ways to be able to approach this question is to look at a list of similar stocks, meaning stocks that are in the same sector, same industry, and to compare the PB ratio across them. So in this case, we have a whole bunch of semiconductor stocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the PB ratio for all of these stocks. So in this case, I'm going to use the Y's function. Here's the symbol parameters. I'm going to lock this in so I can simply drag the function across and I'm going to use TTM as a period. This is going to take the latest price and the latest book value per share. So I enter the formula now drag it down for all these different companies. And here we go. Now we have the answer. So what you can do from here is to look at what are the companies that have the lowest price to book ratio. And assuming that they have a similar quality, those may represent opportunities that you can explore further to see if these companies are indeed overvalued. So here, for example, this looks pretty interesting. So what you can then do is to perform your research on this particular company. Here's another one that looks interesting. Here's another one. Now you may realize that some of these companies, they do not compare that well to some other ones like Nvidia and stuff but you get the general principle. Another tip that I highly recommend that you take advantage of is that you can take this ratio, compare it with a whole bunch of other ratios like PE ratio, return on invested capital, etc. And what you can do is to create graphs so that you can more easily visualize this data. So for example, here I'm gonna go recommend the charts, pick this one, I'm gonna do this to make it better. And now we can more easily see like, oh, what are some of the companies that seem to be potentially undervalued? The cool thing about this too is that this is completely dynamic. So if I were to change the ticker to Microsoft, I know this is not a semiconductor company, but just to show you an example, you would be able to see how the data automatically updates for both the chart and the table. Now you know everything that there is to know about the PB formula. So be sure to use this number in your investment analysis as it can help you find a lot of good opportunities for you to explore. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to become a more successful stock investor. I'll see you in the next one.